This is off planet radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer. As you can see, I have the real Sonia Barrett. The, <laughs> not the fake one. The real Sonia Barrett sitting here with me. This is part eight in our series on the human game. It's been a while since we did an episode and we decided that it would be fun to see what it went like if we did it together. Together, in person. To in person. Yeah, and so, yeah. of course, that necessitated me to have a place for us to record this. And so, um, I would like to thank my set designer for creating this beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful nice. spiritual yes. altar-looking background for us to do the show. I mean, have you ever seen who J.P. Sears is? Oh, he's funny. He I had love that him. show, The Ultra I Spiritual Life. Him. Yes. Yeah, yes. so hat tip to J.P. Spears. Yes. We're going to have an ultra-spiritual ultra spiritual. off-planet radio mm -hmm. uh, that could also possibly look like it might be a commercial for Masaki Miyagawa. I do love his pyramids and his jewelry. <laughs> so Masaki hat tip to you as well. And for those of you who also like Masaki's pyramids, stay tuned because I will be doing a workshop with Masaki early next year and details will be will be to follow at some point soon. So you too can make these beautiful pyramids. And I didn't, I didn't bring my, because usually if you're going to do ultra spiritual, it mm -hmm. helps if you have your scarf. Oh, you have a scarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can scarf. get you a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you a scarf. Yeah. My scarf and my hands like this. Yeah, so. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> You got your scarf now. Oh my gosh, I'm unveiling myself right now. <laughs> I'm unveiling myself right now. Oh, do I have to go through this the scarf? Is now, well? This is now blessed because it's been, you know, on me. So, oh um, yeah. yeah, I have a little of the real Sonia. Here we go. And this, is, and this is why we probably shouldn't do so the show do live like together. Woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look like the woman on the cover of National Geographic, right? Remember the woman of the eyes, the really blue eyes? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Uh, okay, so so there know. may actually be no content or information in the show. This may just be us oh, laughing and God. making jokes and doing silly okay. stuff, but yeah. that we're gonna, might be. We're going to, we'll, we'll try. We'll try. No we'll promises. Try. No promises. No promises. So now that we've explained set and setting, here we are. It's been a while since we've done mm -hmm. a show. Mm -hmm. um, and things are really, really shifting. We've, we've traveled like a lot of distance on this series mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's kind of been kind of exciting and fun and I'm kind of glad to hear the last regular show I'm recording of the year. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice way to, I may do, I'll probably will do something with Randy and I have some of my matrix smashes and stuff with the last regular off planet radio mm -hmm. for the year. And it's been a really cool year. And, and one of the things that's been for me this year is whether you know it or not, you've been a big part of that for me is just, Something about you has given me permission to laugh at everything and to um, go for the life that is enjoyable and happy and content and maybe not as cool as the one that is martyrdom and, and all right, that kind right, of stuff, right? right? So I want to thank you for that. And I want to sort of share some of those things that, you know, some of the things we're going to talk about today are going to be, you know, sort of that kind of split that happens when you decide you don't want to be in misery anymore. You want to be in joy and, and, and really learn to love this game. Right, right. So, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be in misery. Um, you want to be in joy. But at the same time, like you said, you're able to give yourself permission yeah. as opposed to um, putting yourself in this box of what looks spiritual or yeah. what looks good. And I think a lot of people get get caught in that. It's like a look that you want and it's not about that. Apparently, it's not because here we are. <laughs> Apparently, it's not. But funny you should say that because I have had over the years so many um, emails. So, you know, even when I see folks in person who have said similar things that it's, it's like they give, they get permission mm -hmm. from what I do because I guess in a way there are times when I seem like I may be really kind of quirky or I'm laughing or whatever it is, it's different than what is the norm. 
And so they start to feel like it's okay. And I, and I think that's interesting though, because we have to look at the programming, you know, the programming that we've had um, for however long we've had these programs about how to behave um, in all kinds of diff you know, different uh, situations where, you know, we're talking about spirituality now, the idea of spirituality. And so um, it is, it is about just being able to allow yourself to just be free to be authentic. I mean, not trying to just say the <laughs> authentic, the, you know, but I'm talking about really just being. For me, I always express that uh, I am so unbothered, and I used to say I don't care. I don't want to offend anybody, but when I say I don't care what, what people think, I mean it from the standpoint of it's just people. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing is just a massive joke. The whole, <laughs> all, all of creation, all of this thing we call reality and our human experiences, um, it is, it's hilarious. And then we take ourselves too seriously. So I started to realize how just ridiculous and fun all of it is. So then that's why eh, I'm just like, you know, whatever. Well, there's, there's some unique things about, so first of all, like for people who take offense at the idea that this thing is a massive joke, right? They're going, what do you mean it's a game? Right? Yeah. I urge that it's a game. Yeah. Like every single day we are told something by the mainstream media or by the authorities that should clarify to you that this is a joke. Like the other day, and I think I talked about this on my show with the other Danny or Robert, <clears throat> the Congressman Jerry Nadler, who is the head of the Senate Judiciary Committee and is part of running this impeachment nonsense, mm -hmm. literally said there are some problems that can't be solved by election. No. Right. Okay. So therefore admitting that the reason that they're doing the impeachment is because they can't win the election. Yeah. So anybody who still has one little tiny bit of a delusion left, that you can change anything through voting or, you know what I mean? Like right. that, that, that is basically, you know, they tell us something. So it isn't just us looking at stuff and laughing. They're la they, 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 I mean, the rules of the game are made for hilarity. It's a comedy right, show. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right? It's a clown show. So we have things like that. That's just even on, we're just even talking just the 3D yeah. Matrix yeah. construct. Yeah. You don't even have to know anything to yeah. get somebody to tell you it's a joke. Yeah. Right. So there's that. But then the other thing, and I think this is what makes you kind of unique because, you know, I go to some of your workshops and it's very clear to me that some of the people that are at the workshop have a similar set of knowledge and awareness about all the levels of the game and what's going on here as I do. And there's others that aren't that wouldn't, if I started talking about some of the crazy shit I talk about, they'd be like, what you talking about, Willis? You know? <laughs> It doesn't matter, but I think what, it's very rare to find someone, to find a teacher like yourself, who obviously is very into this sort of uh, scientific and metaphysical aspect of this thing that we're in and the transformations we're trying to make. But also people sometimes forget, but those of us who've been around a while don't. You have all that other same knowledge that we all have about the conspiracies, about the mind control, mm -hmm. about the government. I mean, there was a long time when the focus of your work was on citizen sovereignty and right. things like that, right? And mm -hmm. so you, it's not like you're able to just say this because you don't know about that stuff. And so you're right. able to laugh. You do know about that stuff and that actually just makes you laugh harder. It makes <laughs> Me laugh harder. It makes me laugh harder. I think one of the things that really made made me just let some of it go is the transition. You know, you want to get out of the system. You want to get out of the system, and all the paperwork and all the work that's involved with trying to get yourself out of the system. And I'm like, but you just end up on another list. <laughs> that was like the whole thing. I'm like, we just left one list. Now you're on the list of people who tried to get out the system. So does anybody really, you know, get out? And so I started looking at that and, and, I start, and I started laughing about it and I realized that my true power um, came from way beyond trying to unravel my matrix up because who, who am I trying to unravel from this? And that's the thing we need to really examine. What are you trying to unravel from this? Uh, we talk about, you know, the uppercase letters and your fict fictitious you and all of that. And we're talking really our physical being. Mm -hmm. It's the physical, it's the character then that we identify as ourselves, as Sonia and as Emily. It's a character that's really connected with the 
systems, games, and constructs, when you're talking about the election, it's the character. Those systems are designed to govern the character is really the truth of it. The mm -hmm. selecting a, a government and a structure that create guidelines for, um, for characters to operate in. If you start looking at it that way, as opposed to this complete investment that we've made of the totality of who we are, as these characters, who we are is way beyond um, these small selves that are running around. They can't be, that part can't be governed by these, these constructs. However, we're here in, in these bodies, these bodies are designed for this um, third dimensional world, for the, um, the environmental laws of, of this reality. And again, you know, sensory system and how it all is networked together. So we need to st start making the distinction as to who we're talking about. What aspect of us are we talking about mm -hmm. when we are making these references, when we are personalizing so much what's done to me, what's done to me, who, you know, what aspect of you? So it's a, it's a much bigger picture when we, even though with layers, when we start to leave the smaller versions and smaller interpretations of the game and go to elevated, le elevated levels. Now, Emily and I were, right before um, we started the show, we were talking about um, people settling back into some old models um, about reality, mm -hmm. like, the, you know, like 2012, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And what I was saying is that this journey to take yourself to greater levels of this journey, to go beyond um, the, the constructs that you know, to go beyond the standard blueprint of reality that you have, it requires work. It requires a, a greater level of transformation. Mm -hmm. And that means that the old programs that we've been operating by, the old programs that are tied to these characters that we identify as ourselves, um, those are the programs that run interference between mm -hmm. this us and being able to cross this bridge to a more, the more expansive version of yourself. That requires work because we're addicted to those identities and those programs and that blueprint. So people tend to settle back into the familiar. They don't realize that that's what they're doing, but the work ahead is so much that they find themselves settling back into the familiar. And a lot of the familiar comes with a tremendous amount of fear. Mm -hmm. And that's where people get hooked. Mm -hmm. You know, you get hooked on, on the fear and the folks that, um, a lot of, you know, there's many people out there who are speaking, uh, who are prominent figures in the movement, whether it be conspiracy movement or um, new age, but they're peddling versions of reality that trigger many people, whether it be fear or something that's super comfortable, mm -hmm. super feel good, super bliss. Right. The Republicans will save the day that, yeah. that, that God, Jesus is coming back to yeah, save the day. Yeah, and dad, yeah, yeah. or, you know, or we're going to, you know, we're going to whatever it is in the sky to or, ascend or, into yeah, it. or yeah. a thousand years of peace, whatever that bliss is. People are hungry for some sort of freedom, some sort of savior, somebody to save us from uh, from you know from whatever all of this in our minds is and so yeah so people settle back into fear and fear you know it's it fear comes with a sense of excitement too when you well, it is a kind of a dopamine. Dopamine. it dopamine. is it's kind of like um you know with drug addicts right like they're always afraid that like the cops are falling or their, their mm -hmm. cops are coming for them and they, that feeling of okay the cops are right outside the door while i take this hit of drugs right right like, that's right. part of the high oh yeah that's so part of it. it is it's kind of that so you just said a lot of stuff there one of the things that I, w I think is important to tap into particularly for this audience is when you were talking about this character selves as opposed to the bigger selves i would suggest from my own experience and just from the way things look 
that that is the technology that people who run projects like MKUltra tap into, that they know that there is multiple fractal versions of the self. We can do it too, and we can choose to do right. what we want with that technology as opposed to having something that you don't know about deployed on you. You can go, oh, this thing exists. I understand now. This is the character in the game. My bigger self is out here. I can actually deploy another part of that character to go over here and check this out and see if that's something I want to do, right? We can take control of the sort of fractalized aspect of the nature of this simulation that we're in mm -hmm. and, and, and use all of the all of the pieces and parts of it to gather information for the better choices of the big self as opposed to getting locked into like it's kind of like choose your own adventure mm -hmm. games right? right we can test them all out and come away with the full set of knowledge as to how we want to approach the entire mm -hmm. game or we can get really lost in the character that found himself on the path that got, had the most potholes and dips and trouble and whatever and really over identify with that character to the point that we forget that all the other parts of us exist okay, absolutely is that and uh, yeah and and Obviously, that's what happens um, a lot, is mm -hmm. people become invested in, in that uh, identity, in that character, mm -hmm. um, and become, it becomes a full summary, yes, of who they are. And that is the part that is um, more accessible, mm -hmm. um, as you were saying, that it's easier to tap into, because there's, you know, there's a level of us, there's a part that is not so easily accessed by outside um, forces, let's say, but because our investment is so very heavy in this lower version identity, mm -hmm. and because it's all tied to this body, this sensory system, um, and the sensory system gets triggered by uh, emotions, uh, again, electrochemical impulses. So the feelings that we have and the, the, the whatever it is, trauma or whatever it is it's it's felt in the body mm -hmm. and so we become very body everything about you know us is about the physical is about the body mm -hmm. and we've been doing that for such a long time uh, that 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 is our normal that's what we're we're used to we are addicted to all of the sensations that the body instead of appreciating this as a sensory piece of technology as like some sort of as something to a radar detector or something right. that senses what's going on we just think that this is all there is this is the reality rather than something to help us understand everything else. right right we think that we are this is this is us like yeah. this is the totality of us the body it's a it's a technology um and i i keep emphasizing that because i think it's so important to understand to take our idea of technology to a much greater level and not simply continue to condense it to physical things. Um, everything about creation, creation itself is, is technology. It's just uh, beyond our understanding as to how everything works. It's a science really behind the, uh, the, the design and the, the uh, production of things from a substance that we identify as energy because you know we we that's the language we use we have to come up with language but everything is made out of um, uh, a substance and that substance is really allowing everything to appear or to be visible uh, patterns mm -hmm. you know bl blueprints of you know various things that we identify as our reality and then, of course, in order to do that, you have to have like a suit. You have mm -hmm. to have some technology that all of that can be processed through mm -hmm. um, in order to connect with, in order to see, no different than the virtual reality glasses and stuff that mm -hmm. they have now. Uh, and that's basically what we're doing. So we're, we're mimicking the, um, the technology that we're now operating on the planet which is a lot of um holograms and and, and virtual reality mm -hmm. um technology games and all kinds of things what would you say to people like there's some people and, and i've gotten some pushback on this mm -hmm. myself some people will take offense at uh comparing what they consider to be like our our, the organic soul, the, our, our organic nature as human beings, and 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 saying that well, it's just technology, you know, right? Like right, right. I've I've heard that before. Then that 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 kind of response and reaction lets me know that 
there's an understanding that is being missed. Mm -hmm. There is something that is just not understood. And also, there is fear behind it. Mm -hmm. And what is that fear? That fear is that you might be less than you think you are. That's what happens when people are afraid of that idea of technology. That's because you've reduced yourself to this body construct, which is what we're saying, to this this the sum total of who you identify yourself to be in in this 3D version of reality. And anything that could suggest, oh my God, so I so what am I if I'm not that? And that's the fear is something is shaking you from the version and interpretation of reality and who you are, that's being shaken, that's being taken from you. But if you understand what we're saying about the idea of technology, let me just say this. I think everybody can um, come to that realization that everything, every every form that you see and even things that you don't see, but let's work with everything that you see, including the human body, is that it requires some sort of pattern, right? Everything has to have a blueprint for its design, for the human being's body to be what it is, for animals to be what they are, for a chair to be what it is, for you know, animate and inanimate objects to be what they are. Uh, even in our world, yes, where we get ready to create something, what do we do? It's in our imagination first. And then, uh, let's talk about an architect. Um, then, then, then a blueprint is created. And then from that blueprint is created what? Eventually there's material put together to bring this to life, to bring this to, you know, to uh, the, the solid world where you can touch it and feel it um, and experience it. So what we're talking about, again, with the idea of technology, it is a substance, we all agree, okay, we'll say energy. It is a substance that can take any form whatsoever. And the idea that that substance can take any form at all, and the same substance is in an inanimate object, holding it together. The fact that we can do that, we are saying that there is a science. Maybe you and I might not clearly understand the intricacy of that science, but there is a science to all of it to how the planets are moving, to how our bodies are operating in the field of gravity and all of the gases. That's all a divine technology then. Let me use that word, because people right. love that, yeah. that word, but a divine technology at work. You have to change your perception from the programmed minuscule concepts that you've been given about what many things are, and that, has been done in a way to keep us from entering deeper realizations about mm -hmm. who we are, the expansiveness that we are, the fact that we are um, an expression or the vehicle then uh, of expression of that which is beyond words. Yeah. That that core essence then that it's is the absolute, words. the thing you can't the, even the talk about. The thing you cannot yeah. even talk about. There are no words for it. No identification, and it has, and it's not consciousness either. As long as we can call it a, a name and identify it, it's not it. So there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so there is, there is that. So, what does technology do in our world? Technology finds a way to connect things, to create form, to create uh, a radio, a TV, to create anything at all that we we can look at now our cell phones same principle an idea that which has been imagined and then there's a science on our minuscule 3d level our understanding of science here we use that knowledge of science to create these things in our world all we are doing is replicating mm -hmm a much bigger and much more expansive and unlimited um, design. That, that's all that we're doing. So it, it, what you just said is really interesting. You know, like the technology as we know it now, which feels very machines and creating radios and computers, 
actually most of it is um, mimicking our bodies, this divine Absolutely. technology. And so like in some ways it's a, a huge nod to the divinity of the organic or whatever human, human, human form or, or, or whatnot, because the internet is designed to work like, you know, mushrooms in the ground and like right, our brains, like our brains. Work, right? yeah. like our brains. Yeah. And yeah. if you look at like, even, even the technology for designing cities, Mm -hmm. One of the, I, I criticize him a lot, but I also appreciate a lot of things he says. One of the coolest things I ever heard Joe Rogan say mm -hmm. was when he flies into Los Angeles and he looks down at the freeway and sees all the cars going mm -hmm. in different ways. It looks the same as like when you see the body, right, like right. with all the skin taken off and all the different pathways of the veins, and the, mm -hmm. all, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so there's that. I think sometimes, and, and this is where like people who just have, become aware of Sonia through these shows or in her more current, the current work you're doing would be wise to go back and take a look at something like your film, the business of disease, mm -hmm. because like you're actually saying, well, yeah, a lot of the stuff they're d doing with the body, like we don't really want that. Um, so this is a good way to take care of your personal technology here because this stuff is coming, whether we want it or not. So this needs to be in good shape so we can learn how to ride that way. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. And it's all frequency based. See, that's the other thing people need to understand. It's all frequency based. So you're getting freaked out about the fact that I'm using technology, we're using the word technology. And the old days, yeah, you pass by a radio or the TV, you know, that stuff starts to, I mean, you know, you're, you're running interference. You're coming in contact with this electromagnetic um, field. Well, the whole body, the whole thing is it's, it's electromagnetic. So, um, and this doesn't have to interfere with, you know, I think religious beliefs, uh, spiritual beliefs. Uh, and I think if it does, I think if we want to be, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, talking to the audience, if you're going to be honest with yourself, you have to stop and examine what is it that I'm afraid of? What is my fear when I hear that? And I, we've had people be completely honest. I've had people who um, left the church, you know, maybe not so long ago, or uh, have left the church for a while, but still have some religious programming. And, um, and so they're able to admit that for them, for a minute there, some of the information was bouncing up against these programs. And then there is a guilt that is felt with um, abandoning those, that information. Now, because I grew up in, in the church, um, I understand this. You know, I happen to just have come in differently where none of it really stuck. You came in on a spaceship. I came in on, okay, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I don't want to tell everybody. <laughs> so now everybody knows. All right, so, um, so, so you want to look at... <laughs> I just had a funny thought. You. <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear that YouTube video that comes out like about a month or six weeks ago, mm -hmm. where there's a teacher, an African American professor, who's teaching debate, mm -hmm. right? And the student, and this is one of these like professors that think everything is racist, right? So this, they, they're talking about space, and the teacher literally says that space is a white it doesn't exist because it's a white construct, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you just came here on a on a spaceship. <laughs> 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 There's the proof that space is the white box. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah, I didn't, you missed that one. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't yeah. hear that. A lot of times, yeah. Like, yeah, a lot of times I missed the stuff. It's like I already kind of know some of the stuff is going to be. I yeah. So I'm just like, yeah. I'm all for having the debate about whether yeah. space exists or not. But the, well, nothing <laughs> exists. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, I think. I think that you know. I think sometimes <laughs> these things. <laughs> are a way to okay sometimes people are cracking the code and i get that i remember being on to things and even now i do and you're so excited you know you've discovered something because that's that's the game yeah if is this constant discovery of nothing <laughs> it's just constantly <laughs> discovering but when you discover it it's something right but science even basic science here says um, we have what a wave and particle dance. That's what we're dealing with wave and particle and that everything is, but isn't we, we simply are operating in a paradox. And if we get that, it's all a paradox. It's real and it's not, it's an illusion, yeah. but it's not in order for us to have 
this human experience, we have to have we have to have interaction with the the physical and the non-physical. Yeah. You know, it's all part of it. So whether we say space is is real or it's not, then we say time is time isn't, but it is. Right. Right. Oh, so no, it's, it's just real. All, space is yeah, real. Not, time isn't real. Exactly. But it's also so real that we are are and sometimes prisoner to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, space. Space then uh, requires the idea of time. In mm -hmm. order to calculate space, then time is involved. The idea of time is involved. We're not going to get into all of that, but that's, I mean, you know, so it, it, it's all is and isn't. It's kind of, do you, like I was talking about this with Danny the other day. Like, do you remember when we were little reversible jackets? Mm -hmm. It's like one side represents space and the other side represents time. But no matter which side you're wearing, it, the other one has to exist for you to be wearing the side that you're right, wearing. Right, right. They exist yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Everything is and everything isn't. And then the, the idea then of the observer effect, which is why the observer effect does make sense. Because when we are observing an, a particular experience, whatever that may be, um, this is we're talking about the double slit experiment. Yeah, experiment. yeah. Then, then then it has it's there simply because the necessity for you to have this interaction with it. So yeah, you're observing everything into being into being there. But then when you're not observing it, nobody knows. There's, yeah. Is there anything there? Um, it's it's all that kind of um, paradox mm -hmm. and. You know what seemed crazy, but wave and particle they exist at the same time. It's a particle when it's being observed, and it's supposed to be waveform wave when it's not. Yeah. Uh, and it, but they're happening at the same time. Yeah. It's not like oh, it's a wave and then it's a particle. No, there's wave and particle. We are both at the same time, and we are not. Again, we are we're here. We look like we're here physically, but. We're going in and out. Then we are wave and particle. Yeah. Same time. We're also we're, we're also appearing having, and disappearing. We're also out having lunch at the same time. We're here recording yeah. the show and off having lunch. We're off having lunch. We're you know I don't know. <laughs> so building, I, creating new planets. I you know I don't know. I'm busy. She's busy. Yeah, she's real busy. <laughs> so I took us off. I, I I distracted us from you arrived here on your spaceship, proving that space is not a white construct. <laughs> you were saying that you even though you were brought up with religion, you came in differently and so that yeah I came in yeah questioning so, I, I came in in a, in a very aware sense but loved church loved Sunday school was always fascinated by um by I think all of it so I guess like to sing or did they give you treats at Sunday school oh I love to <laughs> sing I would sing I couldn't wait to you know recite my my poems I I was like you know, in it. But I think I'm like that with life, though. There was you like so, to have fun. I like to have fun. Not yeah. only that, there was always this sense that I, that I still feel. There's always this sense of fascination with being human, like this human experience. Even though as a child, I probably didn't interpret it that way. Uh -huh. But looking back, I see that I was always observing life as just very interesting and which is why then I asked that question of myself as a yeah. child is, well, you know, why, why do people die? And then nobody thinks anything of it. Like, you know, everybody accepts it. So as a child, it, the whole thing was bizarre to me, but I cannot think of a moment that I never liked being here. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, it was fascinating. Yeah. It was like, I was, I arrived, I'm here from someplace else. And, and it's just like, it's just, it's so fascinating. Yeah, it's, you know, somebody, when I got into a conversation one time with somebody and we kind of came to the conclusion that like, when they asked me the question, would you rather things be good or interesting? And I said, well, if they can be both good and interesting, that's my preference. But if I had to choose between good or interesting, I choose interesting. Yeah. And being here is so interesting. It isn't stuff that sometimes it's pleasurable, sometimes it's painful, sometimes whatever, but yeah. it's always interesting. It's a mix. And the weirder it is, or the more interesting it is, the more my little thing that loves this, loves right. this game, loves right. to be alive, is activated by that. You know? Absolutely, and and I, and you you said something key. Um, the question that they asked you is, would you, if you had a choice between uh, good and what interesting. interesting? And again, you know that that could open up a massive thing because our polarized interpretation of life is what really does get in the way 
of how we process the experiences. It's good, it's bad, it's black, it's white. And that is something that people have a hard time with. What do you mean? That's, that was bad. Mm -hmm. um, it's the polarization that mm -hmm. does trap us. It's, it's that polarized, you know, uh, this thing or that thing mm -hmm. um, that, that creates that, that challenge for us because we are taught to strive to be good, mm -hmm. to be good people. So you, so you get this one-sided um, protocol that people are striving for. And what happens when we do that? What happens? Most people can't do it. So, so then <clears throat> most people, pretty much everybody has a mask trying to cover what would be considered the bad side of them or the dark side of them. Um, and then you get, this is where the rules come in. This is where our, uh, from our government to our religious rules with 10 commandments with this idea is to, it's always been to help humanity to strive for the idea of good and not let that side of you come out. Part of the reason for that is because there is a tremendous amount of power that human beings have access to. Mm -hmm. When we tap into, when we go beyond these small versions of ourselves that I've been talking, we were talking about these character selves. And so, so there has to be a suppression of that part. It's like in the, in, in the, in the Bible, it was, it in, is it in Genesis? Um, see, I have read my Bible. I'm always like, I'm always trying to quote it, but I can't remember the, the exact quote, but the whole idea is that, um, there was one part there was behold, uh, man has become like one of us knowing, um, what is it? Good and evil. Um, and there was another, scripture oh man there was another scripture that i was gonna um talk about quote as well but but anyway the whole idea is has always been to keep human beings from unlocking like a like a password like unlocking mm -hmm. a part of themselves to recognize that wait a minute ye are gods for them lack mm -hmm. of lack of a better um string of words to keep us from really tapping into that. Mm -hmm. Why is that though? Because the game wouldn't work the way it does. And this game is about polarization. In order to have rich, you've got to have poor, poor folks. In order to have good people, you've got to have bad people. I mean, that's just how we've looked at it. In order to have a victim, you have to have a victimizer. You have to have these um, polarities in order to experience the game the way that it does. Now, if everybody was wealthy, then there would nobody would be wealthy because right. if everybody it would just be how existence it, is exactly, yeah. exactly. So you see, then if everybody is what we call good, then the game doesn't work. It's now boring. it's boring. It's boring yeah. Now it's boring because you if there's can't, no bad guy. There's nothing to. There's no game to be played. Absolutely, you yeah. can't. There's nothing to not only play the game, but there's nothing to strive to. There is nothing to um, to really trigger imagination, a level of imagination. There is nothing to stimulate the. Um, the profound levels of potentialities and expressions yeah. that that which is that is nameless requires the experiencing of because yeah. that's what we're doing we are the vessels or the vehicles of the experiencing mm -hmm. uh, and that's any and everything so None of that could happen if everything was the same. So there is reason. And people, so people need to understand that. It's not just a blank game of just whatever. No, the same, especially the people who are religious, we, you know, again, going back to the idea of God is everything, you have to stop contradicting yourself. Yeah. If God is everything, then, then this idea of God, God can't be everything if God is not everything. <laughs> so, so because of that, everything is allowed. Every action is allowed. Well, why would God allow that? Because God is everything. So you get to do whatever you do. Yes, free will. It is clear that we have free will. 
you get to do whatever you do. And you simply then realize that for every action, nobody's punishing you. For every action, again, the science, the way this technology is, there's going to be a reaction. And so we must be prepared to deal with the discomfort mm -hmm. of some of these reactions, reactions that will come. Nobody's punishing you. It's simply the design of the game, mm -hmm. the, the, the science behind all of this. And if we, so we start looking at this very differently. If we start to see this differently, our own lives will change. Uh, and the second big thing that will happen is a lot of the survival programs that you're running that are about fear, that are about um, what other people think of you, because it's that survival program, what other people think of you and trying to hide who you are. Um, and you know, all of those things, they start to go away mm -hmm. because they are attached to survival. They are attached to fear. Mm -hmm. They are attached to the fact that you're not thinking deeply enough about the bigger picture which is why everything is allowed. And when we start to, the more we start to understand this, it brings us back to what we we're talking about before. Then it's easier to fall in love with the game, mm -hmm. the human experience, and you no longer spend time trying to be a good person or trying to make sure, you know, everybody likes you or being worked because you get it. It's the game. And you can allow people to be who they are and not yeah. fix and look for a savior. And there's a, you know, there's a lot that was said in what we You just, said. yeah. You, but, so two things come to me as it, it, with what you just said. I'm gonna say, address the one that just came up, then I'll go back to the other one, and I think that might be a good way to sort of round out the first, this first hour here. Um, um, we're rewatching Person of Interest right now. Have you ever seen that show? That oh, you know, I watched Person it in the very interest. beginning. Yeah, right. I loved it, so, yeah. It's what's fascinating about it. It's actually a perfect model for what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Is there's this machine that's watching everything? Right. It spits out numbers, and the general idea is the person whose number gets spit out, they're in danger. Right. Right. But what makes it really, as you, you know, there's millions of people in New York City, and then all of a sudden, all of the attention is focused in on one person. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it seems like that's the whole of what's going on when really it's just with every single person in New York City, there could be a similar kind of reality going on, but they're focused on this one mm -hmm. with the idea generally that this person is in danger. It becomes really interesting when sometimes they figure out, oh no, this person's actually maybe about to perpetrate a crime, right, not right. be a victim of one. Mm -hmm. So that's really fascinating. And you see the way that the entire Perception reality changes. for so mm -hmm. many people changes around that. But then when it becomes really interesting is occasionally one of these people being watched either becomes aware or is in that situation because they have an awareness of the machine, right. which is kind of like being aware of the game. And then they start playing with it and interacting in a way mm -hmm. that then the game has to respond and change the thing that's been, that it's been always deployed as. And that's when shit gets really interesting. And I think what you're talking about is people really starting to do that, recognizing that it goes both ways and the game, life is not just a one happening game. to you, mm -hmm. but you're also happening to the game. Right, well, like, yeah, that's right. The game is responding yeah. according to you. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, and again, you know, talking about this for years is getting people to realize that the, you know, the, what you think is being done to you. Yeah, no, the game is designed to simply feed back um, to us according to what we're putting out. And that's the reason why perception becomes really important. Belief system becomes really important. Um, and all of, and those two things, yeah, are going to be tied to what? To the level of understanding acquired. Yeah. To, to how much you open up to deep levels of awareness. That's going to shift your perception and, let's say, belief system because yeah. they are tied together. And the more you shift it, and the only way you can shift it is to what? To open up, to expand, mm -hmm. to be allowing of acquiring greater levels of understanding without the attachment mm -hmm. to the familiar, without the fear of leaving the familiar or going, oh no, well, that can't be, that's just ridiculous. They're, you know, so you hear people that they say that, but that's because it's comfortable and in their mind, they can't wrap their mind around anything 
outside of the constructs that they've been living Yeah, with. so what you just said about cold perception and belief system is really important. I get asked, and it seems to come in waves, and a lot, there's been a lot of people asking me lately, just how do you, how have you deprogrammed? How do you know how to, how have you done it? How do you separate yourself from, from that, you know, the project or the whatever kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And the thing for me, and I was thinking about how this an answer, but in this conversation, it's becoming clear, when things really started to change for me was when my perception of and my belief system around the things that occurred during my day. Right. So it used to be that days were either good days or bad days. Mm -hmm. And bad days were when something unforeseen happens to you. And good days were when you were in complete control all the time or when everything was just status or boring. Right. And one of the things as I started to shift myself and decided I wasn't going to just allow I became aware of what was happening and I understood that nobody was coming to save me yeah. and that there wasn't going to be a fix it, that I was going to have to figure this out for myself. And one of the major things that started changing was I, my, my belief, my perception or my belief about the quote unquote bad days started to change. Mm -hmm. And what I recognized was actually all days were good days. Right, because I got to be here first of all in this game, but mostly like a good day was like pleasant and fun. A day that I used to call bad may have been challenging, but it gave me an opportunity to up, up go up a level. Yeah, right, and, mm -hmm. and to be able to like assimilate like whatever's happening. Okay, everything is okay. That is just something that is happening. It is not who I am. It is not the totality of everything, mm -hmm. and how I respond to this is directly connected to my ability to be controlled by somebody else. Right. or something else, whether mm -hmm. that be some massive conspiracy or just a manipulative boss at work, mm -hmm. right? And so then the taking in of that and being like, okay, this is not what I had hoped for, but this is a fun and interesting challenge. And it started to become, I liked those days as much or more as the days that used to be quote unquote right. good days, because right. these were the days where I pro progressed. These right. were the day that I cleared the level of That's the video true. game and went to the next screen, or, or, or the days that, like, the things that used to be able to bother me really easily suddenly they didn't bother me anymore because yeah. I had overcome you this challenge. Being reactionary, um, yeah. Also, and you, yeah, you're being reactionary according to the perception that you had of it being good or bad. But I think, it, yeah, a lot of this comes down to languaging, I have found too. Yeah, because I, I don't live good or bad. Um, I remember I started leaving, leaving the idea a long time ago when I started to realize that things were just what they were when they were that. <laughs> They're challenging. <laughs> You're uncomfortable. Yeah. But they, they were what they were. And everything is valid. Every single one of the, the moments where you feel down, mm -hmm. if we can start realizing that in that moment when you're feeling that, we can just let it roll because mm -hmm. it's all frequencies. It's something is happening in you. Something is happening. But when we take it and we blow it up into this mountain of, oh my God, then it starts to become mm -hmm. something else. And then your body starts to react mm -hmm. um, interestingly. Because your endocrine system, your glands right. secrete you're, differently. Right. You're, the, yeah. It's a chemical factory. So yes, you're going to have um, these chemical reactions and then eventually if you keep it up long enough now there's an addiction to mm -hmm. that particular um, it's almost like trying to accept all experiences as equal on a certain level instead of some being good Absolutely. and some being bad because you crystallize the bad thing it might be a small thing but it grows and it has more power over you because mm -hmm. now you're afraid it's going to happen again mm -hmm. you're afraid people are going to find out you're afraid you're going to lose whatever that kind of thing but even the good ones if you blow those into uh, uh overblow those then nothing else can ever be as good as that right you're reaching it's a balance yeah. you don't we're not taught balance and we, we're not we're not there is no central point for us there's no balance for us everything is either black or white you know good or bad like i said everything is polarized so we don't know how to um be mm -hmm. and that's why i use that term a lot we don't we don't know how to be and that Learning how to be is a big part of the key to the kind of transformation we want, the kind of freedom, because everybody's looking for this feeling of freedom, this idea of freedom, and uh, because we always feel like something is like, uh, you know, like Russian roulette's going on all the time, or, um, you know, all of that. And so I think that when we realize what you just said, and we learn how to be, if we can start to practice that, then we will find that we don't have to lean, fall over to one side more than the other, but simply it's like stand, stepping back 
and letting that moment of discomfort shift. Mm -hmm. The more you stare at it is the longer it's going to hang around. But if you realize everything, it always passes and allow it to pass. And it takes some practice yep. in doing that. Yep. It takes some practice. You have to really learn to regulate your nervous system and get to the place where like you don't get jacked when, when you see it or when you hear it or when you feel it. And yeah. Yeah. And the knowing is what kicks it off. The understanding. That's why I'm always like the foundation and all the workshops I've done over the years. My, what I've enforced is the necessity of building a foundation. And that foundation, what I mean by that is you have to have a core level of understanding, which is some of the things that we've been talking about. When you have a core level of understanding, like we're talking about technology on a bigger level, the human game and you know, the everything, how everything is, is and isn't, you start to have a level of understanding so that when those moments come, that shake that would normally shake you, even if you, you're shaken, you're standing on solid ground of understanding and you know that this moment will pass. You know, without a doubt, that this moment will pass, but you're standing on the understanding of your knowing. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I really emphasize a foundation because the journey is, it is tough. It's, it's challenging. If you're planning to go into deeper levels of possibilities, mm -hmm. it, it can definitely be that mm -hmm. because we're anchored to this core uh, game that takes you out that core game that from birth to death, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's just a basic core game right there. That birth to death. That's just like level that's one it. training. Camp. Exactly. Yeah, that's what one. it is. You yeah. Know, can you make it past that? And uh, a lot of people can't, um, but there are those who have. So we, you know, everything around us in our reality keeps reinforcing that what I call the level one human experience, which is the, the birth to death, concepts everything reinforces that and so we're already programmed for it and so um you know we look for that 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 part of us looks for um identifying frequencies mm -hmm. that are uh like frequencies and then yeah then we we, we fall into into that process yeah. no good no let me say no right or wrong or good or bad about those choices that's that has nothing to do with that all we're saying is that there are other levels and potentials to, to elevating or upgrading in this human experience. And we're going to see a lot of that now, technology, um, so much, so much crazy stuff that I talked about yeah. years ago. Now, you know, we're, we're seeing and hearing a lot of that stuff coming up now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap up this first hour and move over to the patron section. Before we do, Sonia has a new webinar or workshop -y type thing coming up where you'll yes. get to ex expand on all this kind of stuff we've talked about today. And I will be there and some of our friends and family that you've met through the show and stuff like that will, will be part of this. So it would be awesome if you guys all join in. Sonia, tell people about it. Yes, um, actually, I wish I could look at the screen. Oh, let me pull it's the screen. Called, it's, it's called the Natural Science of the Path Inward. It's a six-part workshop webinar. And I really found that, I really felt that, you know, it just sort of came to me, the necessity of doing this particular workshop. And it's for all the reasons that actually that we've been talking about today, it's going to help people to get this foundation that I'm talking about so that you stand solid on your own because this is what this is about, uh, is being able to do that. So it's a six-part workshop, starts January 11th. And let's see if we can scroll down. I want to just give you real quickly what the lit, what the topics are that we're going to be covering. Okay. You can go to the site okay. right, right in there. Okay. I'll link to this in the sh description yeah. of the show notes. Yeah. So, so um, the, the, the first one is understanding the game of being human, your beginnings, and is there really an end? And it's got, you know, several sub um, topics under that, how to sort through uh, fear, denial, and distracting doctrines. I'm not going to read all of them, the death commitment, um, you know, those are all going to be in part one. Um, the role of angels, guides, and alien life in the human game identifying your God program and the role it plays in your story. 
Uh, so yeah, and then the, the second one is how to end your search for purpose. That'll be part two, how to end your search for purpose by understanding that you are purpose itself. Number three, recovering your ability to be spiritually self-reliant and to trust your evolution. And it's got subtopics. I'm not going to read those. The art of expansion is number four, uh, which is to understand that the act of expanding is to embrace being human. Number five, redefining the act of ascension, a practical, scientific, and natural evolution. And number six is the revision, clarification, and summary of the entire series, practical steps to any version of you. Um, so it's, I am looking forward to it. I'm excited because, um, you know, I, you know, I'm like part of, I always say I'm part of the workshops as well. Mm -hmm. And so many new things show up and everybody yeah, so Anya just has the workshops so that she can do her own uh, personal <laughs> progress. Sure yeah, 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 we I all can. facilitate Sonia's progress. <laughs> so I can move up so that I can upgrade. Hey, it's all about upgrading. <laughs> all about that. So the real Barrett.com is where you can go and go to events and click on all workshops and, and this um, is online it's a web it's a webinar, webinar. So wherever, wherever you are in the world wherever you are you can you can join in and if you have to miss a lot one of the live ones everything's going to be available on yeah. replay and yeah so and we'll be having a lot of fun over there that's right it's going to be really really and cool you guys will love get to laugh and so anyway i hear from people all the time i just love listening to you and sonia laugh so come <laughs> laugh with us come learn about yourself and everyone else and and it's going to be a good time so I will yes. link to that in the show notes. And that will wrap up the first hour of Off Planet Radio, The Human Game. Please join us at patreon.com forward slash Off Planet Media to hear the second hour. And I think we're going to touch on a bunch of things, but one of them may be uh, a new understanding of how to look at a new year. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. All righty, guys. Thank you. This is Off Planet Radio. Thank you.